I found a microphone. So you can hear me, even if you don't want to. Isn't that wonderful? Um, today, we're looking at a rather interesting topic because it's something that I show a lot of. It's one of my strong points, what we're going to talk about, which is why they asked me to speak about it, because I'm an expert uh, and practitioner, a consultant in humility. Thank you. I realise you recognise that in me. Thank you. Which is why I'm speaking about it, because I know so much about it. In fact, to quote a famous uh, Prime Minister, I have never lost that true humility which characterises all great men. <laughs> so, if you believe that, hopefully you might ignore that bit where we go on. Now, what on earth are we talking about? What is humility? So, the first thing I did was to try to get this working. And uh, is it locked? Ah, yeah, well, Google Images. This is the first picture that comes up on Tinterweb when you put in this word, humility. And so I thought, well, what's the opposite of humility? Any suggestions? Arrogance. I couldn't spell arrogance, so I put pride in. So I put pride in and That's what we got, arrogance and pride. Now, I'm gonna ask for some volunteers in a minute, but it's like to talk to them, think a little bit about what humility actually is. The story is told of the vicar at the end of church, standing at the door, and a lady walks past and says, thank you, vicar, what a wonderful, fantastic sermon. The vicar says, it wasn't me, it was the Lord who's practicing humility. Oh no, said the woman, it wasn't that good. <laughs> Often we have a false sense of humility, uh, don't we, when we're thinking about uh, these things. So what actually might be humility? So I'd like to introduce you to my friend, the humblebee. Some of you know the bumblebee, don't you, out there? Well, this is the humblebee, who's very similar because we're supposed to be humble, okay? We're supposed to be humble. Why are we supposed to be humble? We'll find out when we find out what it is. So, given, given, given that we've got a humble be, the reading told us to humble ourselves before God. To humble ourselves. But what does humble mean? May I give you this definition, which is probably the best one I've come across. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Now that's important because some people have very low what we call self-esteem. They don't think themselves very nice and very good and I'm, I'm useless at everything and, and I'm ugly at myself and everything else and we don't have a high opinion of ourselves. And despite that, God still loves us. Jesus calls us, no matter who we are, because we are important. And therefore, humility is not thinking ourselves as rubbish or anything like that. It's thinking less of ourselves, it's thinking of ourselves less. Okay, very important distinction. So, humility is very important. As you've just seen, we're told to be humble in the Bible. What does God require of you, said the Old Testament prophet, but to do justly and to walk humbly with God? What did Jesus um, model but humility? He was a servant. Come, take up my yoke, for I am lowly and humble of heart, said Jesus. And in the New Testament, they use the example of Jesus as an example for us to follow, because Jesus took the form of a servant and humbled himself, so we need to be like that. And of course, humility was recognized as very important. There's a famous man in the um, early, well, not the early church, after the early church, 
who had a nickname because he was such a good preacher. And he was such a good preacher, he was called, well, in Yorkshire, he would be called Golden God. He was called Golden Mouthed, Chris Austin. And he was a famous uh, preacher. And he said, humility is the mother, the root, the foundation of all other virtues. Humility is the mother, the root, the foundation of all other virtues. Another bloke in the uh, early church was a man called Augustine, you might have heard of him. And he said, in Christianity, the first thing is humility. The second thing is humility. And the third thing is humility. So we can see humility has always been seen as very important throughout church history. But what is it and how do we get it? First of all, is there a volunteer? I need somebody to pose for me. Are the children all busy doing various other things? Okay, let's get the bigger. Michael, can you adopt that pose, please? Thank you. That's all I can find. Because in our New Testament reading from the book of James today, it talks about the first thing about humility is that we all should be submissive to God and to each other. And this was the, the picture that came up. You're submissive. Are you submissive? Very submissive. Good. Okay. Is so this is the first thing about humility, is that we submit ourselves to God, that God is bigger and greater than us. One of the ways to achieve humility is to realise our smallness and insignificance. What is mankind, said the psalmist, that you should consider him in comparison to all of the creation? Next one, stay there, don't move. Another volunteer thinks to adopt a pose. Is there a volunteer? Anybody? Any you can, oh, Sue's going to volunteer. Marvellous. Sue, come on up. You have been chosen. Oh, and bring your friends with you. Great. Well, that's just two of you because can you adopt that pose? <laughs> you have to pretend to be gossiping. Yes, you have to pretend to gossip because in our reading, in the book of James, as an example of humility, the second one was submit yourself to God, but also don't slag off one another. And so easy it is, isn't it, to pass on gossip and to do other people down. And when we do other people down, by therefore perhaps we're putting ourselves up. And therefore that is not something that's is an example of humility. And thirdly, oh, can I have another volunteer? Yes. Yes, thank you. Now, I've forgotten your name already. What is your name? Willow. Willow. Lovely. Willow, can you please oh, there we are. adopt that pose? Have you got like that? Yeah, but it point yourself, that's right. Yeah. Everyone, can everybody see Willow? There we are. Yo, look at me. Look at Willow. She's not weeping, Willow. She's a big Willow. <laughs> Yo. Okay, so this says no boasting about tomorrow. And he goes on a great length of change about these merchants who make plans and make lots of money. None of us knows what is going to happen tomorrow, do we? We've all got plans this morning, I'm sure. But none of us actually knows what will happen. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. Who knows our plans? None of us knows. <coughs> and therefore, it teaches us to be humble, to trust God, to know God. So we need to submit ourselves to God. We need to stop slandering and gossiping each other. And we need to stop thinking we're so good that we can plan tomorrow. Thank you. You may sit down. Thank you, Vicar. Thank you.
Humility, like we said, is the root and source of all other virtues. It's a, bike, it's a bit like underwear. We should have it, but not really show it. Because it's something we should be always praying for, but never thanking God that we've got. Because, you see, humility is a slightly different virtue and characteristic than all the others. If I'm applying for a job and I write on my CV all the things about me, do I put humility as one of them? It doesn't seem quite right, does it? Oh, I'm competent in an Excel, I do spreadsheets, I can do this, I've done that, I've got a certificate of this, and I'm very humble. Humility is a bit awkward, isn't it? Because if we think we've got it, the chances are we don't. And therefore, we need to look to God and have a right aspect to Him, which gives us a right aspect to each other. And therefore, the chances are we will show and reflect various characteristics, qualities of humility without actually realizing it. And that is probably. 